Welcome back to another rendition of our World History Online Screencast. Today we are taking a look at the Age of Exploration. Here are the focus questions for this video. The first is, what were the major motivations for European exploration? And the second is, how did exploration affect Europe politically and economically? As a culminating effect of the Renaissance and the Scientific Revolution, Europe was now ready, both financially and intellectually, to see what the rest of the world could offer them. Starting in the late 1400s, European countries like Portugal, Spain, Italy, France, and England all started to explore the world. They did this because ever since the Crusades, when Crusaders would bring back spices and other goods from the Middle East, the demand for these products in Europe increased. This led to the Europeans searching for a water route to Asia and the subsequent discovery of the New World. Advances in learning and technology made long ocean voyages possible where they were not before. Advances in shipbuilding led to the development of the caravel, or a small, light, and masted ship that could easily be carried across the ocean at quick speeds. Europeans also gained a better understanding of navigation, which allowed for explorers to use tools like the compass and the astrolabe, which increased accuracy when sailing. It's important to understand that the Europeans did not invent these tools, but merely used them for their own adventures. Advancements in cartography, or map making, also allowed for Europeans to have a more accurate view of the known world. Maps could be mass produced via the printing press, which inspired many people to become curious about the world around them. The major motivating factors for European exploration can be summed up by what we call the three G's, greed, glory, and God. Let's take a look at how each of these acted as motivation for exploration of the new world. Also, just for reference, when the New World is mentioned, I mean the Americas, versus the Old World, which was already mostly known for Europeans. Europeans believed that vast amounts of riches awaited them, not only in Asia, but also in the New World. Also, stories that were more myth than fact began to circulate Europe about the vast amount of gold that was available in the New World. Besides the lure of gold, the New World was full of natural resources and raw materials that were not readily available in Europe. The potential for profit was huge in the New World, and where there was wealth to be had, the Europeans were sure to follow. As new discoveries were made during this era, a fierce competition amongst European nations emerged to see who could amass the most wealth in land. There's a very important relationship that holds true throughout much of human history that is particularly highlighted during the European Age of Exploration, and that is that land equals money equals power. So Portugal, Spain, France, England, and even the Netherlands all wanted to be the best and to be the richest, and whoever could control the most land could also make a profit off the resources of that land and then become really rich, which would also mean that they would have the most power in Europe. There was also personal incentive for individual explorers to become famous by discovering new lands or waterways, which would probably be named after them. Besides greed and glory, Europeans also had religious incentive to explore the world. Due to the Protestant Reformation, there were many religious conflicts in Europe between the Protestants and Catholics. Each wanted to spread the influence of their version of Christianity to the rest of the world, and they could do this by coming in contact with various peoples outside of their home countries. Of course, during this time period, Europeans had very little regard for those they came in contact with, and believed themselves to be inherently superior to the natives of the Americas. Eventually, the ethnocentrism of Europeans will lead to the genocide of the native people of the Americas. Portugal was the first European country to venture outside the Atlantic Ocean in search of spices and wealth. This was largely due to Prince Henry the Navigator, son of the Portuguese king, who brought together mapmakers, mathematicians, and astronomers to teach in his school for navigation. This led to many Portuguese explorers making significant discoveries. For example, you had Bartholomew Diaz, who discovered the Cape of Good Hope, proving that Asia could be reached by sailing around Africa. Vasco da Gama proved Diaz's theory by actually reaching India from Spain by sailing around Africa. And perhaps the most famous Portuguese explorer was Ferdinand Magellan, whose expedition completed the first circumnavigation, or circling, of the globe. Let's take a look at Magellan's monumental voyage more closely. Although he sailed for Portugal, he left from Spain with five ships, and first reached Brazil. 
From Brazil, they went further to the southernmost tip of South America. They then set sail for the arduous journey across the Pacific Ocean and reached the Philippines. From the Philippines, they sailed past the Cape of Good Hope and up to the Verde Islands. And then finally, back to Spain, completing the first circumnavigation of the globe. The journey took two years, and only one ship survived the trek. Unfortunately for Magellan, he didn't survive the trek either. Whilst in the Philippines, he got into a fight with a native, and it cost him his life. Nevertheless, he is still credited with the accomplishment. Not to be outdone by the Portuguese, the Catholic monarchs of Spain, Ferdinand and Isabella, financed many expeditions. Spain started to explore the world by taking claims on foreign lands, most notably in South and Central America. In order to avoid conflict between who was in control of what land, Spain and Portugal signed the Treaty of Tordesillas, which established a line of demarcation, or an invisible line of navigation, which split the world into territories that could be acquired by the Spanish Empire and those that could be taken by the Portuguese Empire. The potential for wealth between these two countries was immeasurable, and soon more European countries would want in on the action. Although Italian-born, Spain's most noted explorer was, of course, Christopher Columbus. Ever since kindergarten, you have probably learned that Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue in the year 1492. That much is very true, but I'm here to tell you that he did not discover the United States, nor did he discover that the Earth was round. During Columbus's time, the question about the Earth was not its shape, flat or round, but about how big it was and where the land masses were located. Like many other explorers, Columbus was looking for a quicker route to Asia by sailing west. In 1492, he landed in the West Indies, or the Bahamas. He thought that the natives there looked like people from India, thus he called them Indians, but in reality, they were actually Native Americans. Here's a map of the four voyages of Columbus. You may notice that he actually never set foot or sailed to North America, but instead he discovered the West Indies, which subsequently led to the discovery of the Americas. There are several reasons why the European Age of Exploration is significant. First, it's during this time period that European influence spreads to the Western Hemisphere. It also signals the end of regional isolation and the beginning of global cooperation and trade, which we will focus on later in this unit. This time period also leads to the Spanish conquest of the Americas, which began the genocide of Native Americans, an unfortunate trend that the English will carry out later in United States history. And finally, the Age of Exploration catapults Europe into unimaginable wealth, and they establish themselves as rulers of the world. That's all I have for you guys today. Please click below in the description in order to get the link to the quiz, and I will see you tomorrow.